What is up everybody? It is Lawrence again from My Squeakers and today we have a very interesting sneaker in that it's a almost brand new sneaker in the Air Jordan 35 which released sometime in September and a label called Fragment Design. So if you guys don't know Fragment Design, it is done by a guy named Hiroshi Fujiwara and Hiroshi Fujiwara is basically known as the godfather of Harajuku. And if you guys don't know Harajuku, it is this district inside Tokyo that is just known for it. It's kind of crazy, crazy, I don't even know, I guess people, culture, things like that. A lot of the, the things that are happening in kind of popular uh, or even kind of like very Japanese-y type of culture. So if you think of Harajuku girls, uh, it's from that region. The most kind of prolific fragment design in the Jordan brand portfolio is the Air Jordan 1, uh, which goes for thousands of dollars, and it is just basically an irregular Air Jordan 1 with blue colored blocking. With that out of the way, let's get into the review of the Air Jordan 35 Fragment. So let's get all the nitty gritty out of the way and going on the price point and the sizing and things like that, just because I've noticed that most people do not get past the first several minutes of my videos. And so I wanna give you that information up front. If you like this type of format, leave that in the comments below. A lot of it might not make sense uh, right away, which is why I typically do it at the end to kind of pull everything together. But if you guys want it up front, let's talk about it up front. So in terms of sizing, I would go true to size. These fit true to size. The length is really, really good. With that said, they are a snug sneaker. So if you do not want a snug fit, you might want to go half size up. But I would say that true to size fit perfectly in both width. Well, maybe not perfectly. It's a little, it's a little narrow. But but that's nothing you can do about that. Uh, and then and then length, it was actually really, really great. So I'd recommend true to size unless you have a really wide foot or do not want a snug fit. Then go half size up. Price point wise, these are $195, which is uh, $15 more than the typical Air Jordan one that is not the Fragment design. So all the other Air Jordan 35s are $180. This one was $195. I personally had to pay resale for these. I believe I paid around $255, which is not terrible. Uh, these were actually much harder to get than I expected, and they are completely sold out. So if you do want a pair, you'll have to get to them via resale. Or if you have a really, really good friend, remember, tell them it's a, it's the holiday season and Thanksgiving. Hopefully they'll uh, throw you a bone for retail. Over on these is really, I'd say mediocre and good. Uh, really, really good spots in, in others. So I'd say that the, the highlight for me is kind of the snug fit uh, in general, but then kind of there's the, the padding over here is a little much. I'm hoping that it's going to get softer over time. Uh, so I think this is okay in the back. It's probably like a little too much padding for me. And then I would say for the uh, bottom of the foot or underfoot feel, it's decent. Uh, I might need to break these in a little more, much like actually a lot of other basketball shoes. If you don't break them in, they kind of are a little, little not even a little, they're, they're really, really tough to bend. Uh, and so I'll need a little more time, but overall I'd say the, you can definitely feel the zoom air units that are in the heel area as well as toe, toe area. Overall, good, uh, but I definitely got these more of a fashion shoe and I do not play basketball. So let's start with the upper like we always do. So one of the first things you'll notice about the Air Jordan 35 that has been missing in really the Air Jordan 34s and many of the more modern flagship Jordan shoes is that they specifically for the 35 wanted to get back to more premium materials. It's a consumer demand that has been happening for a while and so Nike decided to finally do something about it. And so if you look at the front over here, this leather overlay is made out of a very soft supple leather and that is over here on the front panel as well as the uh, medial panel over here. And you'll find a little more leather done in this blue or royal blue in the back over here and that kind of wraps around to the back and into the medial side as well. Then in the very front of the shoe, you have a breathable nylon that's over here. One of the more striking features of this sneaker is this area, which has a breathable nylon as well. But then they also brought in something that they call flight wire, which is on the entire sneaker over here, which I think is super interesting. You know, normally like fly wire is only where the lacing system is, which is where the technology comes from. Uh, but this is for the entire lateral as well as medial size of the sneaker. And the idea is as you pull on the sneaker, um, you have both the flexibility of the wire, but also an ability to make it tighter. And you definitely, definitely feel that tightness and really kind of like wrapping around the foot feel when you have it on. So the rear of the sneaker, you finish that off with a almost ballistic nylon. It feels like a really thin ballistic nylon that's pretty much see-through and really, really heavy padding in the back. You also have this really sweet 
uh, fragment design double lightning symbol over here in the back over here. And then on the other side, you have the Jordan brand symbol. Finishing off the tongue, you have the nylon material in the front done in white. And finally, a nice smooth leather that is done in a black on the very front. And then finally, the Jumpman logo. On the other end of the tongue, you have the Air Jordan 35 logo, as well as this kind of felt like, I don't know what type of material this is, but it just kind of like felt like material that's stitched on for the very top. What is super interesting about the sneaker is much like they did with the Air Jordan 34, the Air Jordan 35 takes some design cues from the Air Jordan 5, which was released obviously 30 years before that. The main thing that you can see is really in the tongue area. This looks exactly like the tongue in the Air Jordan 5, and so it has that same shape and everything like that. And the other thing they brought back was this area in the back over here where it's heavy padding. It looks very, very similar uh, to the Air Jordan 5 in terms of padding, as well as kind of its thickness as well. So let's talk about the midsole as well as outsole. So the first thing you'll notice is very, very shiny plate over here. That is called the Eclipse Plate 2.0. The idea behind the Eclipse Plate is to help with lateral movement as well as stability and also help you have endurance into the late game. I don't know how it helps with the last part. If you have, or if you ball in these sneakers, definitely leave the comments below in terms of what the endurance plate might do. Uh, but that, uh, that Eclipse Plate looks really, really striking and I feel like it looks awesome and uh, it, it's a little bit smaller over here. While you can't see the zoom units directly, you can actually see it on the Eclipse plate on the inside, which is interesting. So they are exposed on the inside. And if you look closely, you can actually touch the actual zoom pods that are inside. And they have a very, very large unit in the toe area as well as in the heel area. Flipping over to the bottom of the sneaker, you have a nice herringbone pattern done in three different colors. So you have black in the front, white in the middle, and finally blue in the back. So what are my thoughts on the sneaker? I really love how Jordan Brand decided to go with a big name collab almost instantaneously. Like I said earlier in the video, these sold out pretty much instantaneously. I didn't expect these to be so hard to get, but I think it really, really, really does exactly what Jordan Brand does from a performance perspective, put their flagship sneaker uh, on the line here with a collaboration done with a very, I'd say relatively subtle upgrade with, with some of the leather panels, a lot of the, the, the other, um, the other 35s that I've released so far have suede panels, and it just has a really, really great design cue. The main reason I actually bought these as resale in full transparency is because I just really love the color blocking as well as kind of this Eclipse plate and, and how shiny it is. It looks like a basketball shoe that's completely almost like designed for streetwear, and I really, really just enjoy the aesthetic of it, and I think I'm gonna really enjoy wearing these in general. The other thing I like about the sneaker is the color blocking. I didn't like the initial colorways that Jordan Brand has released, and this blue and white and um, and black color just really, really does it for me. And that's it, guys. If you like this video, definitely hit the thumbs up button. If you want more content like this, squeak all over that subscribe button. But until next time, this is the Air Jordan 35 Fragment. Peace. Whoa.